questions on the rab. The Honorable Member for Richmond, Arthabasca. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we have a Prime Minister who is involved in political interference in our justice system. A Prime Minister who has denied the truth. A Prime Minister who's tried to intimidate people. A Prime Minister who's tried to silence everyone who has a different viewpoint than him. If this Prime Minister has even a little bit of courage, just a little bit, then will he agree to act on his threat of legal action and commence proceedings so that we can finally know the truth about this issue? Or is he just afraid of testifying under oath? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we know that Canadians uh, need to hear the truth. And that is exactly why the Prime Minister had the courage to ensure that he would waive cabinet confidence and solicitor client privilege. That's why Canadians were able to hear the truth. And yes, Mr. Speaker, we sent a letter to the Leader of the Opposition. We put him on notice because he is continuing to say things that should not be said. And that is exactly why he retracted his tweets. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Arthabasco. Order. Mr. Speaker, for four days we've been in this House asking this question to the Prime Minister. We want to know if he will act on his threat of legal action. We've asking again and again. But he hasn't changed his version. Every day he says the same thing. He, our leader has repeated what he said before. And all the Prime Minister is doing is engaging in intimidation and trying to silence people who think differently than him. Will he have the courage to act on his threat of legal action so that we can finally hear the whole truth? The Honourable, the government. Honourable Government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Canadians need to hear the truth. That is exactly why all facts are now public. And, Mr. Speaker, We've taken the first step in this process. That's why we sent a letter to the Leader of the Opposition. He continues to make false and misleading statements to Canadians. After he received the notice, he changed the words that he used. He deleted his uh, tweets and online statements. He has already responded with his action. The Honourable Member for Chilliwack Hope. When the Prime Minister threatened to sue the Leader of the Opposition for daring to criticize his actions on the Liberal SNC-Lavalin scandal, he thought he could pressure the Conservative leader into backing down. Yeah. Instead, the Conservative leader continues to state, inside and outside of the House, that the Prime Minister inappropriately interfered in an ongoing criminal proceeding and then conspired to cover it up. If the yeah. Prime Minister actually believes he has a case, when will we see him in court? <laughs> Government House Leader. Yes, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the official opposition was put on notice, and after he received that notice, the leader of the official opposition quickly deleted tweets from online. He changed the words that he has been using. So even though they talk a big game, they say that there's been no effects of this notice that was provided to them. We have already seen that they have deleted tweets. But, Mr. Speaker, this was not the first time they did this. After the Minister of Innovation had put the leader of the official opposition on notice, he had retracted his comments at that time and deleted those tweets as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Chilliwack Hope. Well, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is threatening to sue the Conservative leader for stating that the former Attorney General told the Prime Minister that she was feeling inappropriate political pressure from him. The only problem with that strategy is that the Prime Minister has now admitted that the former Attorney General did warn him about his inappropriate political pressure to his face and in person. So the Prime Minister is threatening to sue for something he now says is true. Yes. Threat Threatening to sue is weak sauce if you don't back it up. So when will we see him in court? The Honourable Government House Leader. The Conservatives' only plan is to mislead Canadians. And that's exactly why when they did it earlier this year, the Minister of Innovation had put the Leader of the 
official opposition on notice. The leader of the official opposition retracted those comments, deleted those tweets. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives once again continue to mislead Canadians. So the Prime Minister put the official leader, the leader of the official opposition on notice. What did the leader of the official opposition do on March 31st? He deleted those tweets. The only plan Conservatives have is to mislead Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Chilliwack Hope, order. Mr. Speaker. The Liberals have put the Conservative leader on notice. He's repeated the exact same statement outside of this House, yes. and now he's calling on the Prime Minister to take further action, come before a court, go on the stand if he has nothing to hide, if he stands by everything in his threatening letter to sue the Leader of the Opposition. I ask again, when will we see him in court? Exactly. <laughs> And after he received notice, Mr. Speaker, he deleted those tweets. He and his team, they went back probably to their office. They revisited some wording. With their new wording is exactly what they are repeating. They will not repeat the comments that they deleted after they repeat, received notice. That is a fact. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. According to McLean's, the Ethics Commissioner has become a useful fig leaf for Liberals keen to shut down further discussions. Harper Conservatives drafted a weak ethics bill, but it's Liberals using it as cover to avoid answering questions. Liberals will be under the microscope when the anti-bribery groups meet in June. Will the Prime Minister assure OECD officials that Liberals will not interfere with Canada's top prosecutor taking corporate corruption to court. Here, here. Here, here. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I would encourage that member to revisit his wording because I know he would never undermine the work of officers of Parliament. And if all of a sudden the NDP is taking that approach, they are even closer to the Conservatives than I even realize. We will never undermine the work of officers of Parliament. When it comes to the conflict of interest in ethics commissioner, yes, there is an ongoing investigation in this matter. Yes, we have confidence in our institutions. We know that there is an ongoing court case. We know that the Justice Committee did their important work. We, I guess, only on this side have respect for our institutions. Thank you. Order. I'm having great trouble hearing the answer. Order. Well, we, have, we, we all want to hear the question and the answer. Of course. Of course. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. <laughs> Canadians are concerned. They see this Prime Minister ignoring questions about the scandal, and they want to know what happened. And they're not the only ones concerned. The OECD has warned Canada that they are watching how the Liberal government is handling this entire affair. People want the truth. When will the Prime Minister launch a public inquiry? Honourable Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, in March, the Minister spoke with the uh, Chair of the OECD Working Group, and it was confirmed that we are going to be fully cooperating with the OECD's work, and that we fully support their work. Canada is a fervent defender of the international order uh, and a rules-based uh, international order. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. It's increasingly clear that this Prime Minister defends big companies rather than ordinary people. Last year, people were horrified to learn that the big banks were aggressively pushing sales of products that people didn't need. But we've learned that the situation was worse and that the Liberal government actually watered down the report on the subject. Worse, they gave the opportunity to the big, big banks to sugarcoat it even further. When will the Prime Minister admit that he is there to help rich companies rather than ordinary people? Safety. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the, uh, uh, the Honourable Gentleman has drawn the wrong conclusion. As a matter of fact, as a result of the report, we have introduced legislation which prohibits the banks from providing misleading information, prohibits the banks from exerting undue pressure, requires the banks to have a policy in place to make consumers receive the products that are appropriate to them, and increases the penalties on the banks from $500,000 to $10 million. The Honourable Member.
member for Burnaby South. Since we launched our lower cell phone bill campaign, we have been swamped from stories of mistreated Canadians. Now we learn the agency tasked with protecting Canadians from the banks changed their report on aggressive sales tactics because the banks asked. Oh. Even a requirement that banks work in the best interest of consumers was removed. Oh. Experts say this shows a cozy relationship between banks, the agency, and the Liberal government. Why is this government supporting billionaire banks and not Canadians? Here, here, here. Public safety. Mr. Speaker, in both official languages, he's still wrong. As a result of the work investigating this situation, the government introduced legislation that prohibits the banks from providing misleading information. It prohibits the banks from exerting undue pressure. It requires the banks to have policies in place to make sure consumers receive the products that are appropriate to them, and it increases the penalties on the banks from $500,000 to $10 million. Parliament decides. The Honourable Member for Lethbridge. The Prime Minister was accused of strong-arming the former Attorney General to interfere in a criminal prosecution. He denied it. She provided proof. Then the Prime Minister was accused of firing her for refusing to interfere. Again, he denied it. Again, she provided proof. The Prime Minister was accused of being aware that the former Attorney General raised her concerns with the officials at the PMO. He denied it, and again, she provided proof. Does the Prime Minister realize that if he repeats these denials in the court of law, he will be charged with perjury? Here, here. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker. All of the facts on this matter are public, and they're public because the Prime Minister provided an unprecedented waiver. Um, he waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence so that Canadians can decide for themselves. And I know the Conservatives believe that they have to decide for all Canadians. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives will continue to represent Conservatives. The Conservatives will continue to focus on us. We will focus on all Canadians. And that's exactly why Canada is better off today than it was under 10 years of Stephen Harper. But Mr. Speaker, we have a lot more work to do. And I encourage us to start talking about policy that matters. Member for Sarnia Lampton. She's right. Canadians do know the facts. The Prime Minister said the Globe and Mail allegations of pressure on the Attorney General were false. We now know that's not true. He said the former Attorney General never came to him to speak of her concerns. We now know that's not true. He said it was all about protecting jobs, but we know now that's also not true. Does the Prime Minister realize that if he repeats these falsehoods in court, he will be charged with perjury? Perhaps I can help honourable members out. Mr. Speaker, Conservative said that the Justice Committee will not meet. That turned out to be false. Conservative said that witnesses won't get to appear. That turned out to be false. Conservative said that the Prime Minister won't waive solicitor client privilege or cabinet confidence. That turned out to be false. All facts are public for Canadians to hear. Canadians deserve to get to hear the truth, and that's exactly why all matters um, from Justice Committee on this issue were in public. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, the Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, on February 7th, the Prime Minister said that this whole story and everything that the former Attorney General said was false. But today, Canadians, the media, and worse, the entire Liberal caucus knows the truth. Does the Prime Minister realize that he would be guilty of perjury if he said the same things in court? Here, here. Good to come, uh, Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time that the Conservative leader and his party have misled Canadians with false and defamatory statements. And, Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time that we had to send a letter uh, to put the official opposition leader on notice, because he continues to say false, false things. In December, in February, and now in March, they retracted and deleted uh, statements and tweets because they realized they had to have at least a little bit of respect. Maybe not a lot, but a little bit of respect for our institutions. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Charles Beauhaut saint charles Mr. Speaker, I would remind the Government House Leader that the letter of notice sent to the uh, Opposition Leader has to do with a statement on March 29th, and that absolutely nothing was changed in that statement. And in fact, the Opposition Leader reaffirmed his statement publicly before the media. 
But the prime minister says things that aren't true. So is he ready to come to the court to say them again, knowing that he'll be perjured? The Honorable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, on a number of occasions now, the leader of the opposition, the conservative leader, has been forced to delete tweets and change the words that he used in his statements. He changed the words that he's used, and now he is repeating the words that he previously changed. But the facts are clear. After the opposition leader received a letter from the prime minister and from the minister of innovation, he deleted his tweets and he changed the words that he was using because he knows very well that we could take action against him. For Lakeland, order. Sir, the prime minister's letter was about the opposition leader's statement. It has nothing to do with tweets. And the prime minister said over and over that no one ever warned him that his pressure to interfere in the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin was political interference and was wrong. But last week, he himself admitted that on September 17th, the former attorney general directly advised him in person to back off. And so now, even though he caught himself in his own words, he still threatens to sue the leader of the opposition. Does the prime minister know that if he repeats his initial denials in court, he will commit perjury? Yeah. Honorable government house leader. Speaker, the first step in any situation, as they are referring to, is to put the leader of the official opposition on notice. And Mr. Speaker, we have now put the leader of the official opposition on notice on numerous times. Canadians can rest assured that we will not stand idly by while the Conservatives, these Conservatives, continue to mislead Canadians. And that's exactly, we provided them notice. And what did the leader of the official opposition do? He deleted tweets, he retracted online statements because he knows very well that the notice he was served has consequences. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to remind the Honourable Member for Paul Jacques Cartier and other members that each uh, party uh, and each member needs to wait their turn to speak. Now it is up to the Honourable Member for Lakeland. The opposition leader didn't retract any statements, and in fact he repeated every single word yesterday. And Conservatives, we look forward to the Prime Minister testifying in court under oath, where he can't control the process, he can't control the people, and he can't shut it down like he killed two investigations. And for once in his life, he'll have to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So does he actually have the backbone to set a date? And when will we see him in court? The Honourable Government House Leader. Now, on numerous occasions, they know very well that the leader of the official opposition was put on notice. They know very well that he has deleted tweets and retracted comments. But what do they do, Mr. Speaker? They continue to mislead Canadians. And they mislead Canadians, Mr. Speaker, because they have no plan for the environment. They have no plan for the economy. But what they do have, they have a plan to mislead Canadians. And that's exactly why, when it comes to programs and services available to Canadians, they choose to mislead Canadians by refusing to admit that there is a climate action incentive. Luckily, they cannot do that in New Brunswick, but they sure did. And on well, member for Essex. As much as this Prime Minister wants to change the channel, Canadians still want the truth on his political interference in the prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. The Prime Minister says that he has full confidence in committees, you know, the same ones that Liberals have shut down debate on. Well, the OECD isn't letting it go, and that's why they referred the case to their working group on bribery. The Prime Minister's word isn't going to cut it. This is a stain on Canada's international reputation. Will the Prime Minister Minister, save us the embarrassment and launch a public independent inquiry. Mm, yes. right. Honorable Parliamentary Secretary for Canada U.S. Relations. Mark, the Minister spoke to the Chair of the OECD Working Group. She confirmed to him that we are committed to fully cooperating with the work of the OECD and that we fully support their good work. Canada is a strong supporter of the OECD and the rules-based international order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Timmins James Bay Order. So my mom calls me. 
And she says, did the Prime Minister really give $12 million to Galen Weston to fix his fringes instead of seniors that they give it to a company that cheats families out of bread? Now, that's my mom. She's a miner's daughter. She grew up in a different middle class than the Prime Minister. So I say, but mom, it's about lobbying. It's about who you know in the PMO. So will the Prime Minister explain why two Loblaws lobbyists attended an exclusive cash for access event with him and senior staff of the Minister of Environment? Ooh. Can they explain that to my mom? Ooh. Ooh. chance to do so. Order. I'm sure the other member who asked the question wants to hear the answer. I trust other members will let that happen. Order. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment. Mr. Speaker, any serious climate plan is going to involve investments in energy efficiency. The project in question involves a $36 million investment from the company. is going to allow them to replace fridges in over 370 stores, which will have the equivalent of on science, facts, and evidence, and the advice of our department. With respect to the Honourable Member's mother, I'd be happy to point her to the investments in Budget 2019 that will help make homes more efficient, that will save her money, and do the right thing by the environment. The Honourable Member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Mr. Speaker, we now know that the Department of National Defence used code names to avoid providing evidence in Vice Admiral Mark Norman's trial. And since October, the Prime Minister has failed to comply with a court order to provide all documents, emails, memos, texts from Gerald Butts, Michael Wernick, Katie Telford and Zita Astravas. Will the Prime Minister release all documents today and ensure Mark Norman gets a fair trial? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, the prosecution in question is being handled by the Public Prosecution Service of Canada, which operates independently from the Department of Justice and from my office. Mr. Speaker, counsel for the Attorney General of Canada is fulfilling all of its obligations to the court with respect to third-party records applications. We are cooperating, Mr. Speaker, but it would be improper for me to comment on any, anything further as it's before the courts. For Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. And yet Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister continues to do everything to politically interfere and frustrate Mark Norman's ability to get a fair trial. He won't comply with court orders to provide documents, and when he does, they're completely reacted. Even worse, he won't pay Mark Norman's legal fees, hindering his ability to mount an effective defence. Did the Prime Minister, or any current or former Cabinet Minister, or any PMO staff discuss influencing the timing of Mark Norman's trial. Wow. Well, Minister of Justice. As I just stated, the government is meeting all of its obligations with respect to third-party records applications. All, doc all documents requested from the priority individuals identified by the defence in February have already been provided to the court. And, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the reimbursement of legal expenses, the Treasury Board policy on legal assistance and indemnification is being followed appropriately throughout. The Honourable Member for Bishop Zichman Levy. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, the Liberals tried to prevent uh, the Davis Shipyard from having the Asterix Shipyard, and then they backed off. We know that Vice Admiral Norman was uh, laid off with no explanation in January 2017, and there is he hasn't had any of his legal fees uh, covered since then. How can the government justify that a respected soldier is not having his legal fees covered when the taxpayers are paying for the Prime Minister's uh, legal team? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I just said in English, the Treasury Board policy has been followed, and that's what we're doing. Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. 
Mr. Speaker, Vice Admiral Mark Norman is a 38-year highly decorated member of the Canadian Forces and was Vice Chair of the Defence Staff. He served this country with honour and dignity. The least these Liberals could do is give him a shot at a fair trial, but they won't release the documents to his lawyers so he can amount a proper defence. And they're hoping that he runs out of money before the end of the trial. The Prime Minister has no problem undermining the rule of law. When will the Prime Minister quit manipulating these court proceedings and allow the Vice Admiral a fair trial? Honourable Minister of Justice. As I've stated, counsel to the Attorney General of Canada is fulfilling all of its obligations before the court with respect to third-party applications uh, for records. Mr. Speaker, all the documents that have been requested by the so-called priority individuals identified by the defense in February have been provided to the court. And Mr. Speaker, the, the, with respect to the reimbursement of legal expenses, the Treasury Board policy on legal assistance and indemnification has been applied uh, rigorously. Member for Windsor West. We learned that the finance minister and the big banks worked together to skew a report that proved banks have predatory practices and abuse their own customers. Banks misled consumers by lying about credit card fees, mortgage rates, and banking fees, to name a few. Instead of protecting consumers, the Liberals decided to protect the banks by editing the report and trying to cover up the truth. This is shameful. Wow. Canadians are tired of this Liberal government being an apologist for consumer abuse abuse, manipulation and exploitation. The Minister of Public Safety bragged about fines and penalties. Does he actually have the courage to act on them? Yeah. Honourable Parliament the Secretary to the Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the contrary, and nothing could be further from the truth than what the member just said, uh, we took the report very seriously and went forward with measures to prohibit banks from providing misleading information to customers, prohibit banks from exerting undue pressure on consumers to buy products or services, require banks to have policies in place to make sure consumers receive products that are appropriate for them, and increase penalties for banks from $500,000 to $10 million, something the Conservatives failed to do for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Speaker, may I remind the, NB the NDP, they voted against these measures. The Honourable Member for Sherbrooke. This is not the Minister of Finance have influenced the agency that is supposed to oversee banks. This is unacceptable. Do we really think that the bank's watchdog will bite its own hand that feeds it? People are fed up with seeing the Liberals siding with the banks and not with us. The government is letting Ray banks rip off consumers and the Prime Minister is turning a blind eye to it. When will the Prime Minister wear the pants, stand up to big Canadian banks and work uh, in the interests of Canadians? Hon Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, over the past three years, we have put forward measures to protect Canadian consumers. And for 10 years under Stephen Harper, this wasn't even on their mind. I'd like to remind him what I said in French. We proposed recent years, well, we've been banning banks from providing misleading information to their customers, and we've increased the fines for banks to $10,000. Hill. Mr. Speaker, I was particularly shocked yesterday when I heard that the Conservatives chose to mislead their constituents in their partisan taxpayer fund the tax guide. This partisan guide left out information on important elements such as Canada Child Benefit and Climate Action Incentive Rebate. It left out information on money to which their constituents are entitled to. Does the Minister of National Revenue agree that purpose— Order, 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 order. Uh, the honourable member used the phrase chose to mislead. Uh, this is very close to deliberately mislead. I'd like him to withdraw. for that phrase. Does the Minister of National Revenue agree that the purposely hiding important... Order, order. I heard the member apologize. His microphone was not on at the time. Uh, I'm going to give him another opportunity, and then we'll go to the minister. The Honourable Member, order. I'd like to apologize and withdraw purposely. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I thank my colleague for raising this concerning issue.
issue. It's unacceptable that conservatives choose to mislead Canadians on how to access their Order. Hello. Hello. Order. Order. I order. Misleading the House is not non parliamentary, but saying that it was done deliberately is non parliamentary. So you said that they chose to in mislead. This is not parliamentary. So I'll ask the Honourable Minister to take the comment back and to apologize. I'm so sorry. My English is not really good. Order, please. The Honourable Member for Mégantique Larable. Mr. Speaker, for more than a month, the Prime Minister and, the, and his lack of inaction has cost a lot for canola farmers. And, and this is the worst crisis that some families have seen in 100 years. Farmers have said that Canadians Canadian farmers are paying for these policies. We've been expecting a response for 10 days. This is very urgent. What is the PM doing? He's waiting. Mr. Speaker, when will the Prime Minister stand up to China and finally defend canola producers? The Honourable Minister of Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to hear my colleague is finally interested in canola because this crisis has been going on for more than a month. And I'm working very intensely with my colleagues, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, among others, on this file. And we're working very closely with, the, with industry, with our colleagues from the province. And I am going to receive, ask to receive a technical uh, delegation to inspect uh, the food. Mountain View. Mr. Speaker, Canadian producers need assurances that the Liberals will support them and our world-class canola as the crisis with China gets worse. Farmers know that this is a political issue and one that needs to be resolved immediately. The Liberals' lack of action demonstrates their contempt for Western Canadian farmers and the importance of the canola sector to the Canadian economy. When will the Prime Minister demonstrate leadership and take action to stand up for canola farmers? Here, here. The Minister of Agriculture. canola farmers because we care for more than a month now. I work closely with the industry, with our colleagues from the provinces. I visited the West provinces. I've asked my Chinese colleague to uh, accept the uh, delegation, a technical delegation that will be headed by the president of the CFI. Mr. Speaker, I really care. I understand the issue and we were working hard as a team to resolve it as soon as possible. Order, please. Excited for the Easter Bunny coming soon, but we've got to settle down a little bit. Order. On the rab. The Honourable Member for Chicoutimi Le Fjord. The PM's lack of leadership has led his government to fail on all international trade fronts. Again today, steels and aluminum tariffs are still in place. Compensation has been provided at a slow drip. And we have to bear in mind safeguard measures will end on April 27th. The situation is critical, and how come the PN signed the trade agreement without putting an end to these tariffs? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, these illegal and unjustified U.S. tariffs must be ended. U.S. legislators, both Democratic and Republic, have asked Mr. Lighthouser to end these tariffs, and roughly 10 U.S. industrials have asked these tariffs to be ended as well. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'll remember for Niagara West. Mr. Speaker, Conservatives launched the most ambitious trade agenda this country has ever seen. Trans-Pacific Partnership was a Conservative deal. Free trade with Europe was a Conservative deal. Updated trade with Israel, a Conservative deal. And the Prime Minister's record? Well, negotiations with the U.S., he delivered losses. Steel and aluminum tariffs, still in place. Softwood lumber, no deal. Our canola farmers, no solution. So with the Liberals so focused on their scandals, when will they be able to get something Done to trade. Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of International Trade Diversification. Speaker, uh, I want to thank my honorable colleague for the question. They haven't asked a single question on trade for the last few months, and I'm happy to engage them in this debate on this issue. Today, Canada is the only country in the G7 that has a free trade agreement with all G7 countries. and the Minister of International Trade as diversifying trade, investing in Canadian businesses, making sure that we're creating wealth. We need assistance for a member. Medical assistance. Well, we will suspend for a few moments. Members who, who brought uh, assistance to the member. Uh, the Honourable Prime Minister Secretary has the, uh, the floor. Um, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of our, our colleagues, I want to wish uh, my colleague uh, the best. And uh, I look forward to engaging my colleague in further debate on international trade. But our government is committed in supporting businesses to create wealth and create jobs for all Canadians all across Canada. The Honourable Member for saint saint pagotte Mr. Speaker, the OECD has called for greater ed for the middle class. This is not surprising when we know that one out of every two people is just $200 away from insolvency. And what are the Liberals doing to help these people? They're giving $12 million of our money to Loblaws, a billionaire company that racks up profits so it can buy refrigerators. We're talking about a company that refuses to pay uh, workers and a decent salary and to provide them with decent conditions. Is this the Liberals' plan to keep helping the rich instead of supporting our seniors and families? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of Environment. The NDP say they support investments in energy efficiencies, but as soon as a Liberal government makes these investments, they seem to oppose them. In fact, Mr. Speaker, this plan was awarded after an application process where the department indicated it would return one of the greatest returns on investment in terms of reducing emissions. The company is putting forward $36 million. It will have the equivalent of impact of taking 50,000 cars off the road. If she's concerned about affordability, I look forward to her support for Budget 2019, which is going to continue to put more money in the pockets of middle class families. Honourable Member for North Island Powell. River. Well, Mr. Speaker, I can think of a lot of small businesses across this yeah. country that would certainly appreciate a little bit of help. <laughs> it's more of the same from this Liberal government. They continue to stand up for rich corporations while everyone else has a hard time making ends meet. Seniors cannot afford their medication. When will this government stand up for them instead of companies like Loblaws? Scott, from my writing, wrote the minister requesting when his new fridge would arrive to help him become more environmentally friendly. The Liberals don't get it, but my constituents certainly do. When will this government stand up for Canadians and spend money on supporting them? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister, the Minister of Health, pardon me. Important as the National Pharmacare Program, our government wants to ensure that we have a plan and we want to ensure that we get it right. That's why that I was very pleased that we launched the Advisory Council on the implementation of a National Pharmacare Program. This committee has been working for the past year. We've received the report last month and I'm looking forward to receiving their final report later on this June. I have to say one of the key recommendations that they made in the interim report was to make sure that we put in place a Canadian drug agency and I was pleased to say that in Budget 2019 the money is available to start that Honourable Member for Carleton. 
This prime minister has a golden rule. Those with the gold make the rules. <laughs> when SNC Lavalin was charged with stealing $130 million from Libya's poor, he rushed in to block them from having to go to trial. When Loblaw's billionaires ripped off the poor by fixing the price of bread and ripped off taxpayers by stashing their cash in the Caribbean, the Prime Minister said, here's $12 million for your efforts. Why does the Prime Minister always take from the have-nots to give to the have-yachts? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Environment. It's a curious argument coming from the member opposite who voted against the Canada Child Benefit, which put more money in the pockets of 9 out of 10 Canadian families, and that he voted against uh, a tax cut for the middle and voted against raising taxes on the wealthiest 1%. The fact is our environmental plan has over 50 measures, including putting a price on pollution, that will put $307 in the pockets of his constituents. I look forward to seeing him campaign on a commitment to take that money away. Mr. Speaker, in 2019, Canadians will have a choice to support a government that is serious about climate action or a government that opposes reasonable steps every step along the way. Honourable Member for Carleton. Well, Mr. People, uh, Mr. Speaker, Canadians will have a choice between the son of a working class family who will stand up for ordinary Canadians and let them get ahead, or the trust fund prime minister who will protect millionaires like himself yeah. by whole, upholding their loopholes and hand, forking over yeah. endless sums of taxpayers' money. Exactly. Speaking of which, when it comes to SNC Lavalin, the decision is still not final. The prime minister interfered to try and get the company off of charges. Will he now? Respect the decision of the prosecutor and promise that no, no Liberal politician will sign a deal to block the trial. Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I want to quickly provide a quote that I haven't provided for a, a while now, but the Director of Public Prosecution Service confirmed that prosecutors, quote, exercise their discretion independently and free from any political or partisan consideration. That member is lacking confidence in our institutions. I can confirm to him once again, as was provided at testimony at the Justice Committee, the rule of law is intact in Canada. Our institutions are intact. Canadians can have confidence in them, and that member should stop misleading Canadians. Order. Before I go to the member for Carleton, I have to advise him to be judicious and avoid personal attacks. We have full confidence in the Director of Public Prosecutions. That's why we think she should be allowed to make the decision exactly. on prosecuting SNC Lavalin. This government refuses to guarantee that that will happen. They've interfered in this, this case. They've interfered in the Norman case. And now we know that they implicated the RCMP for nine months in orchestrating the Prime Minister's illegal vacation to Billionaire Island. That vacation might have violated sections of the criminal code which the RCMP would be responsible for investigating. Wow. How can Canadians be sure that there has been an independent vetting of this issue given the past The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the facts of the matter are that the RCMP are completely independent in their decisions about any investigation or prosecution and any suggestion that a member of parliament should in any way influence that decision-making process with our police forces is absolutely wrong and false. Member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Mr. Speaker, our government knows that it will take a bold, ambitious and inventive new vision to address the challenges we face today. Indeed, the urgency of action on climate change is clear, especially in Canada's northern and remote communities, who see the, so the effects of this every single day. We know that reducing our reliance on diesel power generation will play a key role in the transition to a greener future. Can the Minister update this House on investments our government is making to to reduce our reliance on diesel in off-grid and remote communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank the member from uh, Northumberland, Peterborough South, for her question and for her hard work. It is clear that the best solutions for combating climate change in the rural and remote community, indigenous communities come from the people who live there. That is why our government is investing more than $3.5 million in two indigenous projects owned and operated by Nihat Gwachin Development Corporation. 
Investments like these create jobs, cut energy costs, and protect the environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Abbotsford. Mr. Speaker, Loblaws is a billion-dollar company that is owned by the second richest family in the country. This is the same company that rigged bread prices for 16 years. Whoa. They really don't need handouts from a tax and spend liberal government. Now the Prime Minister, our reverse Robin Hood, is giving this company $12 million to buy what? New fridges, while raising taxes on struggling Canadian families. Why is it always with these liberals that they're giving to the rich, and robbing ordinary Canadians. The Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment. This question a number of times. The fact is, every step of the way, the Conservatives are opposed to meaningful action on climate change. Mr. Speaker, our plan includes putting a price on pollution that's going to put more money in the pockets of Canadian families. It includes phasing out coal by 2030. It includes having 90% of our electricity generated from green resources by 2030. And yes, it includes investing in energy efficiency. In my own province of Nova Scotia in October, I personally made an announcement through the Low Carbon Economy Fund that would help homeowners make themselves more efficient and bring down their power bills, including by a, uh, in implementing a rebate on fridges for personal use. Mr. Speaker, we're taking climate change seriously. Honourable Member for Vancouver East, order. Liberals called out the Conservatives for cozying up to white nationalist Faith Godey. But now, the Prime Minister wants to close our border to asylum seekers who are fleeing persecution and violence with a law that prevents them from being able to apply for protection in Canada. Right. When Faith Godey supports the Liberal immigration policy, you know that you're on the wrong side of the issue. <laughs> By hiding it in a 392-page omnibus bill and refusing to refer it to the Immigration Committee, the Prime Minister is trying to sneak through this shameful law. Will the Prime Minister stop talking out of both sides of his mouth and withdraw this legislation? Honourable Minister of Border Security. Our government remains committed to a fair refugee system that provides protection to those who need it most, protects the safety of all Canadians, and keeps our borders secure. On the well-established international principle of asylum primacy, we wish to encourage all those who truly need protection to seek asylum at the first possible opportunity. And the measures that we are proposing are part of a broader package included in Budget 2019, which is aimed at ensuring that people who genuinely need asylum receive it quickly and efficiently. And I wish to assure the member that every, every claimant will have access. The Honourable Member for Vancouver East and the Honourable Member for New Westminster Burnaby know that after a question is asked, they should listen to the question the answer. They may not like it. I can't promise them that. That's not for the Speaker to rule on or to comment on. But, uh, in fact, I'd ask them to remember to listen and wait their turn before they speak. The Honourable Member for Don Valley North. Uh, Mr. Speaker, from pioneering satellite communications technologies to building a Canada arm and space-based radar systems, Canada has been making key contributions to space science and technology for over six decades. Can the Minister update this House on our efforts to foster our future astronaut, engineers and scientists so that Canada continue to benefit from opportunities in the space economy? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. From Don Valley North for his question. Our government published a new space strategy based on innovation and exploration. It will take advantage of our strengths and putting forward strength in science and innovation. Our space strategy will also take inspiration from youth to try and get them to get interested in technology. And our government is making sure that we have jobs for tomorrow in Canada. For Elgin, Middlesex, London. Mr. Speaker, yes. an illegal vacation to a billionaire island. Inviting a, a convicted terrorist to India. Destroying relations with our most important trading partners. Attempting to politically interfere with the criminal prosecution. Countless ethics violations and an attitude that the rules and the law don't apply to him. Like so many Liberals before him, this Prime Minister's record is scandal and failure, with serious consequences for Canadians. How come when it comes to the Prime Minister and his friends, they're taken care of, but ordinary Canadians are not? Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, that member just demonstrated once again that 
the last people the Conservatives seem to be cared about is all Canadians. So let's speak about our record. Over th almost 300,000 children lifted out of poverty. Over 800,000 Canadians lifted out of poverty. 950,000 jobs created by Canadians. Trading relationships with each of the seven G7 countries, trading deals that we have today. Mr. Speaker, lower taxes on middle class Canadians by raising them on the wealthiest 1% of Canadians. A climate plan that's showing results. The Honourable Member for Manikwagan. Mr. Speaker, when I asked the Prime Minister a question yesterday, he said we should never legitimize discrimination against Canadians. And as if Quebec's bill on government secularism was discriminatory. This bill makes rules for us all. This is not discrimination. These rules will be the same for everyone. Is the Prime Minister accusing the Quebec government and millions of Quebecers who support this bill of being discriminatory? Is this how low the Liberals have stooped? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, we have always defended and will continue to defend the fundamental rights of every Canadian. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freeders protects everyone's rights. We cannot pick and choose who we protect and who we don't. Our position, Mr. Speaker, is clear. It's not up to the state to dictate to people what they can or cannot wear, regardless of their beliefs. The Honourable Member for Madi Kogan. Mr. Speaker, it's up to Quebecers to decide what's good for them, regardless of what the PM thinks. The secularism of the Quebec state will be decided in Quebec City, not in Ottawa, not by this House, which refuses to condemn the shameful statements of the mayor of Hampstead, who compared the secularism bill to ethnic cleansing. Will the Minister of Justice respect the will of Quebecers and commit to not challenging Bill 21 or supporting a court challenge to it? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, I'm a Quebecer, and I have the right to provide my opinion on this. Mr. Speaker, we strongly condemn the use of such inflammatory speech as the mayor has done. It is hurtful for those who have suffered atrocities. And um, as the Prime Minister has already said, we don't need to go be extreme. As Quebecers, we can express our, our disagreement with this bill without going too far. Earlier this week, I received a call from Chief Leo Friday of Kesheshawan First Nation. Ten days from now, more than 2,000 people from this community will be forced to leave their homes in the annual evacuation process. The Chief is concerned about the resilience of the dike, and there are legitimate fears of severe flooding. Our country spends millions of dollars annually for evacuations and for repairing flood damage in homes. When can we expect a serious commitment to funding the relocation that the community has been asking for for years? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to Minister of Indigenous Services. I thank the Honourable Member for her question. Our commitment to long-term re relocation plan has not changed. Uh, the member would know very well from her work as uh, Minister of Indigenous Services and President of the Treasury Board the work that is underway to deliver on this commitment. We've made significant progress on priorities, uh, such as the new modular school which will be built in the community in September. We're currently working with the First Nations to monitor the threat of flooding, conduct preliminary mitigation, and support them for a smooth transition to host communities. Bravo.